So I hear you want to ride a motorcycle. I hear you're looking at some videos. You watch some stuff online. You're trying to figure out how to pilot one of these amazing two-wheeled machines. And you've come across a great video to help you on your path. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use the clutch, this lever right here, on your motorcycle so you can get to learn to ride a little bit better. This is something you're going to learn in your basic motorcycle safety foundation course. If you go and take one here in America, it's a very common thing to learn how to use the clutch as the very first thing on your motorcycle. So today I'm going to walk you through everything I know about it, what to use, how to use it, all this good stuff about the clutch lever and the clutch on a motorcycle. In case it's your first time on this channel, welcome. This is the Yammy Noob channel. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, this is one of our giveaway motorcycles. That's a big thing we do here on this channel is we give away motorcycles. If you hit the link down below on yammynoob.co, you can find out how to get entered to win this beautiful Triumph Street Scrambler. We also have a Honda CB500R and a Kawasaki Z650 being given away for free. We've also got a Ducati Panigale V2 as an expert bike, and we've also got a Harley Davidson 883 as a modern classic. We've got lots of bikes to give away. Click the link below, check that out. But let's get started to teach you today how the clutch works on a motorcycle. So the first thing I wanted to go over today is what the clutch actually is. Um, so this is the lever right over here that pulls a little cable that tugs on something down over here inside of the engine. I actually don't know specifically on this Triumph Street Scrambler where the clutch is. It might be on this side. It might be on this side. It's actually not visible for me right here. I actually see the little cable right here actually. So if I pull right over here, you can see this mechanism moving. I was actually searching for that and I didn't know where it was on this bike. It's pretty common to be on the left-hand side. So what that is doing actually is it is pulling a set of springs and friction plates to disengage the transmission from the output gear of the engine. So the engine has a little gear that spins and the transmission has several gears that change based on the gears you select that outputs out to the rear wheel on this side right over here actually because this bike's a little bit different than normal. So that's all it's doing. This little lever right here is just activating this little cable right here that pulls it open that engages engages or disengages the transmission to the engine. So let's do this really quick. Let's start up this motorcycle and we will actually put it in neutral. And as you can tell, we can start this bike in neutral, just like that. Motorcycle is starting up, comes to life. You can hear it here, chugging away. We can even rev the engine. Twist this throttle here, allow the throttle body to move inside the engine, and it doesn't go anywhere, right? I can even straddle aboard this machine, rev this all I want, it's not gonna go anywhere. So when you're learning how to ride a motorcycle at the MSF, this is what they will teach you. They will teach you how to turn on the bike and just sit there with it. You'll probably walk it forward or walk it back or something like that, and uh, that's gonna be the first step for you to understand. Now, a safety feature that is common on a lot of motorcycles, it's what's known as a kickstand kill switch. So what it does is, if you try to put this motorcycle into first gear while the kickstand is down, it will turn off. So I'll demonstrate this for you right now. I will pull on the clutch, select down a gear right over here. This is our gear lever where we select gears on a motorcycle. First gear is down, and subsequently the rest of the gears are up. So if I pull on this clutch and select down a gear, this motorcycle is now dead. I can't rev it. I can't do cool stuff anymore. That's because the kickstand was down. So all we have to do is pull the kickstand up. Let's put it back into neutral for demonstration's sake. Hit this right over here to start it. Pull the clutch in and the motorcycle has started once again. Now, let's go over what this motorcycle does when we pull in the clutch and when we select down a gear. So we'll pull in the clutch right here, select down into first gear. You feel a satisfying clunk, we're now in first. And if I don't give any throttle over here, if I just let this clutch out, watch what happens. Oh, we are now moving forward. This bike wants to move forward. So that is because the clutch is engaging with the transmission in first gear, and it's actually allowing the output shaft of the engine to move the rest of the motorcycle forward. Now, if I pull this clutch out and I keep going forward, I'm actually along my way. So this Triumph Bonneville right here is actually a very friendly engine, and because it has a big displacement engine on it, it's 900 cc's, it's pretty common in larger motorcycles like this for you to be able to pull the clutch and ride away without even getting any throttle input. If I pull the clutch in though, we notice that I'm starting to slow down. I don't have power anymore. 
And this motorcycle is kind of lurching, 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 and we're stopping. And we're not going to keep moving anymore. That's because I don't have any more power going to the rear wheel. You can think of the clutch as you giving or taking away power to the rear wheel and the engine. A lot of people think that that's done with braking or lack of throttle, and that is true. But if you don't know what's going on when you're learning how to ride your bike, if you're getting all out of sorts, if you don't know what's what to do next, just pull in the clutch, all the drama is going to stop. Now, eventually you're going to want to break out of that habit, but for right now, if you're learning how to ride, that's what you're going to want to do. So what you're going to do obviously in the future after you've learned how to pull this clutch away and get moving really what you're going to want to do on basically any other motorcycle is balance what we call the friction zone with the throttle so there is a certain point on this lever that you will feel the motorcycle to start to creep forward for me on this bike it's right about there as I tug out right there, the bike starts to move forward. As you can see right there, everything starts to move forward for me. So at that point is when we add a little bit of throttle and we can take away nice and smooth. So I'll show you guys what that looks like right now. We'll pull the clutch out to right there, give a little throttle and be well on our way. So let me show you. And we're away and we're in first gear we're on the throttle and we're cruising along here in this little parking lot now that little balancing act is going to take some getting used to so the first thing you're going to do in your msf and those kinds of places is you're going to practice that a whole lot you're going to be taking your motorcycle from a stop to a start and go along your merry way as you develop more skill with the motorcycle you'll be able to hop aboard any bike figure out what the friction zone is give it a little bit of throttle and be on your way so we'll do it again right here take off just like that it's really not too hard once you wrap your mind around what the clutch is actually doing when it comes to your motorcycle it starts to become a whole lot easier of what you should be doing with it now I want to show you guys something if I'm cruising along here with my throttle at a fixed position if I pull on the clutch you see that the engines being held at a certain rpm that's because if you pull on the clutch, you're not giving any power to the rear wheel, right? If I pull on the clutch right here, I can give as much throttle as I want. I'm not actually moving anywhere. However, if I'm off the clutch like this and I start jerking the throttle around, it's giving that power straight to the rear wheel and making the whole ride jerky. So again, the clutch is going to stop and interrupt power to the rear wheel once you pull it in because you're disengaging the transmission to the output gear of the engine. You pull in the clutch, you can rev as much as you want, it's not going to go anywhere. So that's how we take off with the motorcycle it's pretty simple pretty intuitive to understand once you get it but i highly recommend that you guys just practice once you're figuring out how to learn how to ride a bike catch your msf and all that kind of good stuff come to a stop figure out your friction zone practice taking off smoothly you'll let out the clutch just like that stop like that and come back on stop like that it's pretty easy once you wrap your mind around it. Now, alrighty guys, so you're gonna keep practicing those moves slowly but surely, and you'll figure out how to get the motorcycle moving on the clutch just like that. But now, let's get this thing out on the open road and see how to float through the gears using the clutch and maybe even without the clutch. Let's go. There you go, nice little wheelie on camera for you. Alrighty guys, when you make it through the parking lot and you get out on the open road over here, you're gonna start to notice that some things change. The dynamics of the motorcycle change, your throttle becomes a lot more important, and you're, you're out of the parking lot, right? You're moving through space and time on your motorcycle. Now, the number one thing I wanna remind you is smoothness. Everything on a bike's about being as smooth as you can. So, as I see that guy pulling out right over there, I wanna make sure that he's not gonna be pulling out into my lane, always being aware, all that good stuff. But when it comes to the clutch when you're riding, it's gonna be about smooth, quick motions to get through the gears you need to get through. So I'm in second gear right now, but if I wanted to speed up here a little bit and move into third, I would bounce through this little thing right here and then 
boom, right into third. All I did was pull in the clutch and pull it right out, and I was in third gear. There's no need to very slowly apply the clutch when it comes to shifting through gears. You really only want to be nice and smooth and slow with the clutch when you are doing slow speed maneuvers. So as we see right here, I take off just like we did in the parking lot, and I'm moving along here. Second gear right there, snicked it right up. If I want third gear, I'm gonna do the same thing, just pulling the clutch really quick and blip up through the gear. Boom, right there, on to third. Now you'll notice one thing that I'm doing is I'm laying off the throttle slightly when I select up to the next gear. So as I go through here, on the throttle in third, into fourth. Now downshifting is a little complicated for beginners and I'm gonna explain why in just a moment as we get moving here. But as you notice, I, if you watch my clutch hand, as I'm working through this traffic a little bit, all I'm doing is still the same parking lot maneuvers that we learned. I'm feathering that clutch, just slowly going through here. It's all the same, nothing's really changing except you are not deciding when you're starting and stopping, but traffic is sort of telling you when you should start and stop a little bit more. So as I mentioned, we're going through here, we're in first gear, we're going to snick up into second, cruising here through traffic, and now to go down one gear, ooh, what did I just do there? Why did I just pop a little rev on the engine? Well, that is because when you select down a gear on your motorcycle, the best way to get the gear down is to do this little rev match dance that I like to call. Now, I did a whole video on rev matching that you can go and check out, but I'm going to explain it here for you guys just so you get a feel for it as well. So as you see, we took off right there just like we did in the parking lot. Picked up a gear right there. Rolling on the throttle. Picked up my next gear. Just cruising on through here. Now, let's say I picked up the next gear. I'm in fourth gear right here, but I want to select down a gear. Well, you're going to have to do a little bit of a song and dance with your uh, hands and your feet. So as we went over, this left foot right here is selecting your gears up or down. If you want to select down a gear, you're going to have to pull in the clutch, select down a gear, and then blip the throttle a little bit to match your RPM. So I'll do that right here as we come to a stop. Down a gear down a gear, down a gear. So the clutch is being used right there every step of the way so that I can quickly and easily select down my gear. I rev match a little bit to increase my RPM to match the new gear because the next gear that's going down is gonna be a little higher RPM than the gear that I'm in right now. So you have to blip the throttle a little bit. Now with all this talk of clutches and making sure you use the clutch to select gears and all of that, um, I definitely wanted to show you guys that in fact you don't need to use the clutch at all if you don't want to. There's a strange phenomenon that can happen where if you let off the gas ever so slightly and in the space between you letting off the gas and the transmission catching up to where the engine is and you give it a little bit of space, you can actually slip through to the next gear up. And if you're very clever, you can actually select the next gear down just by letting off the throttle and letting back on the throttle and getting the gear down. So I'll show you guys what that looks like right over here as we take off on this red light. So I take off there in first gear with the clutch, but as I get second gear, rolling off the throttle, rolling on the throttle, I just went through all three gears right there without using the clutch. Now I can also select down a gear without the clutch if I want to by rolling off the throttle and back on. There was third gear. There's second gear, third gear, fourth gear. That's all done using just a little trick of the throttle. No clutch required to go up or down gears. Now, that's a bit more of an advanced technique and I wouldn't recommend beginner riders start messing around with clutchless upshifts or downshifts, but it can be a pretty cool feeling when you figure out how to do it without the clutch. So I hope this video helped you guys learn a little bit more about using the clutch on your motorcycle. If you haven't ridden a bike yet, let me know in the comments down below if you're excited to try out a clutch yourself. If you have ridden a bike before or you currently ride, also leave me a comment down below Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Once I hit a million subscribers, I'm going to get myself a Turbo Hayabusa. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Well, howdy, partner. How's it going? Now, this video is over, but I'll tell you what. You click on this one right over here, you can keep watching yourself some Yammy Noob. Now, if y'all didn't know, we're based out of Austin, Texas, so click on that video. You might check out something cool.